Right, good morning folks. It's uh God knows what time it is. Um one second, we've got summer coming. It's about half past nine, I think. About that. About nine thirty right now. Yeah. We're gonna have a bit of rain today. There we go, I knew we would. Oh, and I'm going home for breakfast tomorrow with Rob Bianca. <laughs> They've accepted the offer of we having breakfast together. Yeah. <laughs> They told me to bring the bacon, so okay, I'll bring the bacon. Yep, I'll bring the bacon. I'll bring the music. I suppose. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. All right. I suppose I've got to bring some hugs as well. Why am I doing that? Yeah. Right. Uh, this video. And one thing I will say to start. I sit in the car. I think I've got it. To a certain degree, I've got to start speaking about her in these videos because I've come up with so many ways of trying to you know, um, describe her, as in her personality, who she's going to be to me, but I'm, not go I'm going to run out of things very soon if I've not run out of them already. I'm not that inventive. I really am not. So today I'm going to try and speak about, uh, well, the subject for today is the push at the moment that God has been gently pushing, not massively hardly hard pushing. Who are you? Yeah? Who do I say you are and who am I? The reason for that, if we're talking about the thing we were I was talking about yesterday, about um, doing the job you're called to do, about the fact it's not your burden, if you understand who you are, if we can understand, well, put it this way, I'm understanding for most of us. A lot of it is based upon our understanding of before we, before we became a Christian. That's our understanding of who we are. The problem is we were born again. That person died. When we became born again, that person died. We, we were of the world beforehand. Now we're not. So, spiritually, that person there you go, bye-bye. Gone, gone. That person was supposed to be gone. The problem is we've not really let that person go because the teaching that we've received has not helped us to realise we have to let that person go, even though the Bible clearly says so. The Bible talks about the old man, about dealing with the old man. The old man has to go bye-bye. Dealing about the renewal, the renewal of the mind. They're becoming a new creation. It's all in there. Sorry, look, the reason why I get frustrated is because I'm in this situation and there's a lot of other people in this situation where we're, we're going to come to God now after being a Christian for so many years and say, okay, can you tell me now, who, who am I? Now? And who are you? Help me to understand you, Lord, so I can understand who, who I am. Because they work together. If you know who you are, you know who he is. If you know who he is, you know who you are. <sighs> well, because, again, the thing about the burden. We are going to carry burdens if, we start, if we're still seeing ourselves as that old person. You know, the person we were before we gave our lives to God. Because that person thought it was up to them to sort of carry the stuff. Right? So of course, you yeah. know, that's why we often take on burdens that we shouldn't take on because that person used to do it. That person thought that was right because that's what the world taught that person. But you have to take responsibility. Certainly there's loads of men down history that were completely broken by the fact they were trying to carry a burden that really wasn't theirs to carry that the world was telling them is theirs to carry. It wasn't. And women, you know, trying to be the good wife, the good mother, and, you know, doing all that sort of stuff. A lot of women just rebelled against that because it was just too much. Too much of a burden. The point of it is, if you give it to God, so I, I did the video the other night about, um, I don't know what it's called, about me having to give my love for 
Oh, here we go again. <laughs> For you know who. <laughs> For the one I've described many, many times, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. To my delight, right? Even though my delight is God as well. So, one of my delights, there you go. Um, for, for the human version of my tonight, there you go. Um, and delightful, she certainly is. Then when I said about that, I said about the fact that, you know, in the relationship, we're going to have to keep giving things to God. You know, we take things back from God, learn from it, give it back to God. Say bye-bye to that. Go on. But that's the point. Keep on giving it back to God. It's his. It's like, it's like to a certain degree, we have a, oh, no, that, that's not right. That's not the right analogy. Lord, I need an analogy for this one. Um, like a library, to a certain degree. You go, you sign out the book, you bring it back. You know, you sign out bits of your life from God, you, you take that from God, you bring it back. The whole point is you're supposed to bring it back. You're not supposed, it's not yours. When you get a library book, the book doesn't belong to you, you borrowed it. It doesn't belong to you, you've got to take it back. All the stuff doesn't belong to you, you gave your life to God. It all belongs to Him. All that stuff, all that stuff that's a burden. You know, the men, you, you've got to be a provider. Excuse me, who's supposed to be your provider? God. God is your provider, right? Read the Bible. It's not your job to provide, it's God's job to provide. He's going to provide through you, but he's going to guide you and lead you to do that. Right, that's his job, not yours. Well, for example, Bob Bianca. Hello, Cal. How are you doing? You're beautiful. God bless you. There you go. Have a good day. And you. You have a good day as well. I know you're looking at me as well. God bless. There you go. And you've got to pray for the cows as well. Hey. If they're looking at you, they're asking you. Not they really. In the only way they can. <laughs> now, talking about Bob Bianca. They're living a way that is really foreign to us. One second. Perfect dog here. One second, gorgeous. Yeah, I've spoken about Bob and Bianca before. Now, the reason why their situation is so bizarre to the rest of us and so difficult to understand is because people still see that the, the man is responsible or the parents are responsible for providing. They don't understand that God is responsible for providing. Now, of course, a bit windy again. <laughs> I, don't, I wasn't going to say, well, of course, a bit windy again. No, I was going to say something else, and then it started getting windy. Um, see, Daisy, it sounded as if that was what I was trying to say. It was not. No. Uh, go back over here, see if it's a bit quieter again. Normally it's quieter over here. Nice little area over here. Right. Good area to go for the quietness. Is it going to be quieter? It's still noisy right now. Oh, is it? 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 Yeah, it's too bad that. We still blow around here a bit. Huh? I think it's coming from that direction this time. Oh, anyway, now what I was going to say is, yeah, the way they're doing it is to the extreme. Really. Um, but is it wrong? Eh. I mean, I've, to a certain degree, with them. They're doing something that most people don't understand. And so therefore, they've not exactly got a ton of examples as how best to do this. So they're trying to be the example. Are they going to get things wrong? Yeah, of course they are. I'm only getting this space here, it's still quite windy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, we need to understand who we are. 
me to understand why we're here. Yeah, Lord, why, when we gave our lives to you, why did you just leave us here? Now, I know from my understanding of the Bible that we're not supposed to live according to his wills, his ways, and therefore live according to heaven. So why didn't he just take us up to heaven? This is where you get some weird ideas from a lot of Christians. Oh, well, God's still designing heaven. He's still building a place for us. After 2,000 years? Yeah, look, I'm sorry. If you think that the Lord is having to build all these houses for these millions of Christians on his own, yeah, he's a carpenter and all that, but no, that's not what's going on. Um, <laughs> he'd be absolutely knackered. <laughs> He would need a break, I think. <laughs> so, no, that's not what's going on at all. We were left here because we're supposed to be vessels for him. We're supposed to be this new creation that God can use. One sec. So, I thought there's a helicopter or something coming over. No, that's not. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to be a vessel for him. We're supposed to be cleansed out. All the crap that we brought in you know, from our old life is supposed to be cleansed out. Any issues we have are supposed to be dealt with. I said the other day, you know, it's supposed to be his will. So when it's your will, if your will is still in there, God's going to walk away. He's not going to come into that situation. If you, as a church leader, are trying to rescue your church, if you're trying to save your church, God won't. You've got to give it to him. These are the things that should have been got rid of in us. Yeah, that we can do any of this stuff. Really? No, uh, that's the point. The whole idea is that, no. Am I capable of holding up a church? No. no I, did, look, I did a video, the one I did last night about giving that love to God. It was too much for me. You know, I was I was trying to hold up the relationship that wasn't even necessarily there yet. Yeah, you know, I was trying to you know s spend time with God as to understand how this can be built and that's how this can be built in a way that's going to be you know glorifying to Him, but also it's going to be absolutely phenomenal for us and where it's going to work. Where it's going to work? Where well, we can thrive as a couple. Well, we're not struggling and arguing all the time, you know. But that was too much for me. If that's too much, how on earth am I going to hold up a church? I'm not that particularly a weaker person. I'm not talking about physically, mentally, and emotionally. I'm no weaker than anyone else. So if I can't, there's no way that anyone else can. But there's people thinking that they can do that. It's like, you can't. And if you try, then God won't. That's the point. God's leaving you to do it. So, okay, you think you can do this? All right, go for it. If you take 20 years to try before you realise you can't, then God's just sitting by waiting for you to finally realise you're going to give it to Him. We've got to realise we're not supermen. We're not superwomen. Yes, I described the love of my life for a supergirl the other day. Yeah. I was running out of things to describe her as. That's, that's why. And she's going to be super for me. She is. I know that. But is she some sort of superhuman that's got incredible strength? And No. No, she's not. So we've got to understand who we are. We've got to understand that yeah, we're not that. That's not who we are. And the goosey up there making all that noise. I'm not sure if it's calling its friends, but there seems to be only one. Uh -huh. The rest must be somewhere, man. You got lost. Every goosey, you get lost. Right, you go for it. Go find. Hopefully that one's got good eyesight. I think it's going to need it. 
<laughs> Seems to be flying a bit faster now, so maybe it's fine. But that yeah, comes into the point of understanding. If we understand who we are, we understand that we need, as a body, to be as one. Because we cannot survive. We cannot, we cannot thrive. T-H-R-I-V-E, that one. We can't do that unless we are as one. But when we understand just how insignificant we really are, and that without God we can't do anything, without each other we can't do anything, then we start to walk in that. We start to walk in that understanding and we start to be blessed because we're not trying to carry burdens that are not asked to carry. This point about who you are. That's why, you know, that point about not of this world is important because if you realise you're not of this world, then you've got to start to seek, okay, where am I of? And what does that mean? If, if I'm of God's kingdom, what does that mean? How should that look? Yeah, how do I apply that into my life? If you still see yourself as in the world and of it, but then you can't walk according to God's kingdom, can you? Because you don't see yourself as that. Right, generally speaking, you, you have situations where there's videos occasionally on YouTube of heroes and you know and um, people doing the right thing. Those people can see themselves as a hero before they do that heroic thing. The people standing by are the people that can't see themselves doing it. You know, someone goes out into a river to rescue a dog or a human. Yeah, you know, whatever. To rescue an animal or a human. They already know they can do it. They already know that this is the right thing. That basically, this is them. This is what they should be doing. They can see it before they walk in it. Those people standing by, they can't see it. That's why they're not walking in it. Now, in the church, you can see those that can see themselves in God's kingdom. They can understand that because they're walking in it. The best part of me, her, she's doing it. Is she doing it to the nth degree? Probably not. But she's doing it at least to a, a certain degree. She has some understanding of that. And that is, you know, to me, wow. That's a real blessing. Yeah. I don't see many that are doing it. But if we could just spend time seeking God to understand who we are. It's the point. Read the scriptures that aren't that, that aren't the uh, the lovey side of God. Read all of it. Read the stuff that talks about a new creation. Read the stuff that talks about renewing the mind. Read the stuff that talks about not in this world. Read the stuff that talks about the old man dying. Yeah? Then go to God. What does this mean? And then sit and be quiet and wait. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. See, this is why, for me, this is why these videos are important for me. Now, I don't particularly care you know, how many people are watching the videos right now yeah if god wants other pe people to watch them in the future then he'll do that um to me it's about practice it's about you know trying to be led by god and trying to have god speak through me as much as is possible so if given an opportunity by god to you know, minister to these people to these brothers and sisters 
who are struggling with this, then hopefully I can put it across in a way that's going to just ding, that's going to you know, wake them up to it. It's going to help them to see that, to see themselves in there. Yeah, that Matthew 22, 36 to 38, I think it is. Um, that when I saw that, it just, wow. It wasn't put up there any special, it was just up on the screen. And, yeah, it was just the right time for me to see it. But it just became part of me in a way that it never done before. Yeah, that's the thing, it's about being used by God to be able to do that. To be able to help people to walk in that. Because that's, that's my desire. My desire isn't really to see the church being filled with all these people that aren't saved. That's going to happen. My desire is to have a place where these people can come into and they can learn to go from surviving to thriving. That's what I want to see. I don't really care whether I'm part of making that happen. As long as it's happening, that's what matters. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to it now. That would do for this video. It's um, a good, what, 21 minutes. There you go. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.